Hello and welcome back to Automotive Tales. You'd be forgiven for thinking I am in the United States of America. I am not. I'm actually somewhere in the Midlands and today's video we're going to talk about, well, Ford Crown Victorias. <laughs> so, the reason I'm filming a Crown Victoria today is because this particular Crown Victoria here is for sale. Toot toot. As you can see, the owner has, um, yeah, quite the, the, quite the collection. Um, let's actually just very quickly look over here. Um, so this is an original New York taxi, which interestingly is a long wheelbase version of the Crown Victoria. So first job is we've got to do a bit of, um, well, moving cars around. So this one has to move. We've already moved these two and well, my car down there and this car all have to move so that we can get 7007 out, which is what I'm going to uh, film with today. So I'm just going to do a quick cold start on it. So it's been sat for a few weeks, just so you can see how it sounds. So while the owner Chris is just moving things around, there is lots of fun little things tucked away here. Look at that. Dodge Charger and uh, there's another I think Crown Vic in front of me here and then this here this is a Dodge Diplomat so the Diplomat here is actually screen used cast this was used in the usual suspects sadly it's not looking in great shape right now but it's uh, awaiting restoration but uh, yeah very cool sort of uh, reminiscent of the um, the Ghostbuster era New York police cars in the blue and white very very cool but this is what we're taking out today So we're here at a petrol station to do a car wash. I'll explain why in a minute uh, with a black and white police car. But we've just bumped into another car YouTuber. So this is Craig from Exhausted with his little MG project. He's off on a little drive now for the weekend. And we just have to be in the same place at the same time. So check his video out. I'll try and put a link probably either in a little card up on the screen or in the description below. Um, so he's just had a look around the police car. Time to do some filming with the police car and a pressure washer. So we are in the Crown Victoria. I'm here with Chris, who's the owner of the vehicle. So Chris, tell me a little bit about this car. First of all, what's its history and how did it come to be with you? Well, it started life in San Antonio, Texas. It uh, is a 2001 Ford Crown Victoria, and it um, was a patrol car in the city of San Antonio for two years, and then it got sold at auction once the city had finished with it. It did 60,000 miles in its first two years of life. Wow. Which is quite a lot. For a city car yep. and then when it was sold at auction it was sold to a guy in England who bought it and exported it from the US back to England. Uh, that was in 2003. Since then the car has done 1500 miles <laughs> in just over 20 years and I found it last year at auction when the estate was being sold off. It has MOT history which proves the mileage Plus, um, in the US, they have an equivalent called Carfax, which gives you history of the vehicle from when it was new, and that verifies the mileage, also verified where it was based. Despite the fact that it's got Los Angeles stickers on it, they're not the originals, but the numbers that are on the side and on the roof are the original numbers. All the equipment that you see, the center console, the lights, this is all the original equipment as it was in service. The only thing that was removed was the graphics from the door from the city it came from. So it's a proper American police car in the UK, fully kitted out. And does all the kit work? Everything works. Um, the siren works, the lights work, 
um, the, exactly as it was in service. <laughs> So you've had this car for a couple of years. You're now passing with the car, so it's going to go to auction again. Yeah, mm. I've done loads of work on the car. So, for example, we put a new suspension on the front. We've done all the ball joints on the front. We've done the brakes, front and rear, new calipers because they were seized because it was sitting for so long. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done oil, transmission fluid, and we've done uh, spark plugs. EGR valve has been done new battery, new idler, new tensioner. Fairly substantial refurb then. Uh, lots of work that needed to be done just to get it back up to its roadworthy state. Although it had an MOT before, um, it wasn't really roadworthy. It still had a few issues. Although it passed an MOT, it wasn't. Um, it wasn't. A we weren't able to drive it because the brakes was the biggest thing. The brakes were seized, and they just got very hot very quickly. <laughs> um, um, the other thing about the car is because it came from a southern state, it's absolutely immaculate underneath. So the MOT tester said he's not seen a car this old that's in such good condition for a very long time, which is a you know good testament to how well built they were. Um, and they were designed to last mm -hmm. for many years. The design, the interiors of the car haven't changed much since late 90s. It's pretty much the same right up to 2011. They were the same inside. There was a few tweaks, a few changes. It went from a cable accelerator throttle to a electronic mm -hmm. um, accelerator and um, throttle body. And um, there was a few upgrades that uh, made it a bit safer as well. For example, they put Kevlar around the fuel tank because there was an issue in the past where the fuel tank was punctured from items in the trunk, boot, trunk, whatever, you, American term, trunk. trunk. Um, and um, as a, just as an aside, as a fix for that, they went, instead of retrofitting the Kevlar, they produced an insert to go in the trunk, which was Kevlar lined and a plastic insert just to stop items in in the, in the case of a rear impact puncture in the fuel tank. That's crazy, isn't it? But I guess these cars were put through their paces by the police force. Um, this one looks in pretty good shape. I don't, there's no evidence of it being in any shunts or bumps. There is a ref, reference to it in the Carfax report that it had slight uh, minor damage, which has obviously been repaired. Um, I think it was the front driver's side wing, but otherwise it's, it's all original and the bodywork is in really good condition. It came from a state where there was no salt on the road, it was very dry, um, and uh, so that's, that's kept it as it is. A single overhead cam V8. So it's shared with the Ford Mustang, I think? The same engine as the Ford Mustang, certainly the older ones. Mm -hmm. um, the, the chassis is it's part of the Panther platform. They were built in Canada, in St. Thomas in Canada, but the, that plant no longer exists. They finished making them in 2011. Um, it's the same chassis as the Lincoln Town Car, and it's also the same as the um, Mercury Marauder. I had to think for a second. <laughs> but it's all the same chassis. It's a, an original chassis with a shell on the top. Made right up until 2011, they were still doing body on frame. That's how very American. So what you get with this is a big thonking V8 that is pretty lazy, but you just ride on a wave of torque, which is sort of what you want to expect. It's no, uh, it's no pursuit car, though it is technically called an interceptor, isn't it? Yeah, it's a Ford Crown Victoria, so the model is Crown Victoria. The kind of sub-model, the, the variation is the police interceptor um, identified in the VIN number by the letters P and then the number 71 mm -hmm. or the, or the, although the newer ones the 2010 2011 were uh, identified as letter P and then the number 7 and then the letter B for Bravo. There you go a little bit of fun fact about four Crown Victorias. So this isn't the only Crown Victoria you've got is um, it Chris? And they have one or two others <laughs> but this one needs to be sold because okay. I'm under strict instructions that this one needs to be sold. 
So uh, his management has told him he needs to shift one of them. So this is the one that's going, because it's all fully functional, it's in fabulous condition, so it should be the easiest one to sell on. And it'll make somebody a great car to take to shows, to, to show off, to go to go out for dinner in, um, and just an authentic piece perhaps for some maybe kind of film and TV work as well, because it's authentic, it's original black and white, it came out the factories of black and white. The only variation on it from when it was in service was the door graphics. Everything else is exactly as it would have been. You could even maybe film a music video. So what do you get if you buy yourself a Ford Crown Victoria? Well, you get a very basic interior. So this is the same interior they made for, what, 20 years? Um, and in this particular model, it's actually got seats. Sometimes they've got a cage and a plastic seat in the back for crims and all that. But in this particular model, you've got a full fabric interior. You've also then got the, uh, the basic dashboard we talked about earlier. So you don't even get a rev counter in here, but you do get obviously temperature for oil and coolant, you get your fuel gauge, you get your voltage regulator, which is quite useful because obviously you've got the lights on, you wanna make sure that's charging and your odometer. So this is the original reading, 61,000, which is incredible. Uh, and your obligatory uh, gearbox indicator. So you have a stalk on this, which I'm gonna try not to roll the car away, which I won't do without the key and hold on. A few moments later. So with the ignition on, I can now take it out of gear. So you've got the almighty column change, which you'd uh, know and love from all American cars and all American films, which is pretty cool. And then as previously mentioned, you've just got your radio. AM, FM, that's as much technology as you get. Now this looks like an aftermarket button, but believe it or not, this is original equipment. It matches nothing else in the dashboard, but this is your boot or trunk, because they're American, release. How cool is that? Now obviously, being an American car, you're gonna get bongs. It bongs at absolutely everything. This is bonging at me because the key is the ignition, so let's take that out. So down in the center console here, you get all the controls for the lights and the sirens. You've got your little walkie-talkie here so you can speak to the crims. <laughs> and you've got your siren amplifier. And of course, it's an American cop car, so it has got cup holders. Currently today holding our um, things for recording, our little CB radios. You can pop the bonnet, wait, no, sorry, hood down here. So under the power barn here, you've got Ford's mighty 4.6 litre single overhead cam V8. So it's sort of the same basic engine you get in the Mustang. Uh, and as you can see from the bit we were talking to Chris about earlier, uh, it's got some new tensioners, new idlers. You can see the new EGR valve on there. And actually you can just about down here make out there's all the new suspension components that have been done on this car. So yeah, nice healthy sounding engine, nice squeak free suspension, which is unusual for a Crown Victoria. Now, because it's an American police car, you must excuse all my uh, filming nonsense uh, and all the spare boxes for the parts that Chris has had for the car. But you can see this almighty boot. I mean, it is giant. Let me come to one side. I mean, this is, you could fit at least three bodies in there. It's huge, um, but it has the coolest feature to stop you putting bodies in the boot. Yes, I wonder why that was there. All these weird things come because, because things have actually happened in the real world. So somebody at some point has been trapped in the boot of a Crown Victoria, so they decided this was an essential. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed this tour around this Los Angeles police car. And if you are interested in owning this car, well, it will be coming up for sale very shortly. We're hoping it'll go live on Evoke Classics in mid-August. So check out the website. I will put a link in the description once it goes live. And uh, yeah, happy bidding. Right, that's all from Automotive Tales. See you soon. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.